Hi guys, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations with another short video on a vintage pachinko machine. Um, as always, if you like to see these videos, please click on subscribe so you know when I put a new one up. Love the comments, uh, love the thumbs up likes. Uh, it's very, very nice to uh, realize that people appreciate what you do. Um, one thing on comments and, and uh, questions and things like that, uh, regardless of how you contact me, I do have a Facebook presence, although I tend to forget that because uh, the website is actually uh, something I, I look at much more often, um, or the YouTube comments, and I, I check them every day. So as soon as you either um, fill in the contact us on the website or leave a YouTube comment, um, I see it, I'm going to respond, uh, especially if you're asking a question, you need information um, from the website, um, I'm definitely going to go after, you know, look for a phone number and call you back. So uh, please be aware that I, I do that quickly. So if you need a question answered, I want to be able to answer it quickly for you. Okay, so today... This is a Sanyo machine. And unfortunately, I'm not sure of the year. Um, they, I, my guess is this, this spent two years in a, a parlor. The reason I say that is if you take a look at where the inspection sticker is right here, um, there's the normal inspection sticker and then there's another one right over the top of it. And that one obscures the Showa date. So I'm not 100% sure um, what year this is, my guess is 74, 75, somewhere in that area. Um, it's a pretty machine. We did a full restore on it, new play field, um, all the wood, uh, put the, the nice, well, you can't, there we go. Put the nice, uh, cherry stabilization feet on it. Um, it was in pretty nice shape when I got it. Um, although it did, did need the play field replaced. It was, had faded like most of them do. Um, so I'll show you the different um, features of the play field in just a minute. As always, I take care of the wood. This is beautiful redwood mahogany. Um, or red mahogany, not redwood mahogany. Red mahogany. Um, can't find it anymore. Or they don't use it anymore. It uh, used to be quite plentiful. Now it's not. This particular one, um, when, when they take pachinko machines out of the parlors, uh, typically they just take the power connection, which is up in here, and either unplug it or just cut it off and, and uh, or unscrew the little thumb screws and, and the machine comes to the United States. Um, this one had had that done and everything else pretty much was gone. Uh, this micro switch was here and there was a leaf switch here, but all the wires were gone. So I redid all the wiring on this. Um, and when I don't have any kind of uh, remnants of, of the circuit board, I make my own. And these are just a little, like a little breadboard kind of a thing. So I bring my, my power in from my 12 volt um, power supply. So you've got red and black. And then this is just a simple circuit. It's, it's power and return positive, negative, however you want to look at it. It's, a, it's just a DC circuit. Now, this was interesting. The, there was nothing here, um, and both these lights have to go out through this particular attraction. So what I did here, <clears throat> this is actually a piece of plexiglass that I cut and formed and then mounted the two lights in it. There was nothing there to, uh, to mount the lights in from the original machine. And again, this was a leaf switch and it had no wires attached to it at all. So I thought rather than trying to get at those little tiny um, ends of the leaves in there, I just put a micro switch in and it works just fine. This lever comes up when you get a jackpot and activates the micro switch. So that all worked really well. The, uh, these machines, nice thing about these, um, you've got a number of hold downs here and uh, this particular uh, machine, this, this had gotten broken somehow up in here, and they screwed the um, feed tray right to the board. So once you take the screws out of the feed tray and get the feed tray off, then simply by undoing these uh, connections and these two screws, the entire gut slips right off the machine, which is kind of nice. Um, of course, then you have to take it all apart and clean it, but it gets it off the board um, quite quickly. So that's what she looks like. It was uh, pretty dirty on the inside as they all are. So let's uh, load this kit up.
and show you the machine in action. This, this is the ball dump here. And when you dump the balls, this gets pushed over and the, the weight of the balls pushes these legs up and then they stay up when the ball dump is activated. So these legs stay up when the ball dump is activated. So you need to push this over and let the legs drop back down where they belong before you load it up with balls. Um, also, this is a, a maintenance piece here. Um, the wires are going to keep it from going forward, but you, if you push that forward like that, then the balls will stop right here. Uh, so you want to keep this out of the way. I, I just leave them there for, for authenticity. So this is the mechanism that when enough weight comes down, it will trip and activate the um, micro switch. This micro switch is normally open, so the light would be on as soon as we plug it in. And then when this weight goes down and turns that micro switch off, it turns off the uh, ball out light to let you know that there's enough balls in the machine. So as always, take a handful, drop them into the upper tray, And if everything is correct, they'll run down through the turnaround, come across and drop down into the jackpot chamber and start to fill it up. So we're good there. And actually, let me plug this in so you see the ball out light on. So the ball out light is, is on now. It's the upper one. And it, there's a, a red and a yellow um, piece of plastic on this attraction. And the, the upper bulb will shine through the red. And the lower bulb is for the jackpot and it shines through the yellow plastic so it's still telling you that there's not enough balls in the machine and that's because this micro switch hasn't been made yet so we'll continue to put balls in and when you get enough balls in the machine as we have now they start to back up and you can see them actually starting to pile up here. But now there's enough weight on this piece here that, that pushes down on the micro switch, turns the light off. And at this point, then it's okay to go ahead and you want to put the bulk of, of the balls that you have in this upper hopper. So if you've got 500 balls, you want to put 475 of them up here. All right. You're going to need something down here that will, will span between here and here. This is where the winning ball drops out. This is where the losing ball drops out. So something similar to this tray needs to be put here to catch the balls, okay? The other thing you wanna check is to make sure your seesaw is in the correct position right now. The seesaw is in the correct position. There's the seesaw chamber. Uh, this little lever right down here pushes the seesaw up. In other words, it's this way rather than this way. So that's the way you want it to start. If it's down, then you're going to have trouble. So we're good to go. We're going to turn this around and, and get some balls in it. So you're going to put some balls in the upper feed tray, put your catch tray back, and now you're ready to play. Now when you play pachinko, you need to learn how to launch the balls. And you need to bring this handle all the way down to load a ball, and then let just let it roll off your thumb like that. Now if you notice, all the balls are, are coming over to this side and, and the tension is adjustable on the back side of the machine. Or push down, make sure a ball loads in and then I can come up just a little before I release. And then the ball doesn't go quite as far. So ideally, you wanna get used to getting a ball to drop right down through the middle. And that's where you're gonna uh, ultimately get the most wins. And the reason being, there's a win. All right, I'm going to cheat this a little bit. Um, as I said, you want to drop it through the middle. 
The reason being is as it goes through the middle, it tends to open the tulips. So if you put a ball up in there, internally it goes through. And for some reason, my ball out or my, my jackpot light isn't coming on. Well, we'll check that. Um, so by dropping it through the middle, it opened this tulip. And then if I come in on, on this side, This side, I've forgotten now where I got to drop a ball, but it will open the, the side tulips. Okay, so now that you have the tulips open, it's a little more easy to win. I can almost aim where I got, I got, I got, I got, whoa. I got two or three in a row right in this tulip. And if you notice now, balls were coming out. I, you couldn't see it in the video, but the balls were starting to come out here. That's because this tray is, is full. And when they start to back up here internally, they will start to come out here. And you'll hear a different bell. It's a, there's two bells in a pachinko, most pachinkos, and you'll hear a different bell tone when it starts to back up like that. So that's the Sanyo Comet 2. Hope you like it.